Hello, this is John from CaveOfProgramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to start working on creating a simulated explosion effect. So at the moment, our particles are all starting in random positions and they're wandering around the screen um, randomly. Well, actually, they all have uh, fixed speeds and directions and they bounce off the edges of the screen and just kind of wander around. So what I'd like to create here is uh, an explosion effect where they all start from the middle and they all fire outwards in a sort of circle, a sort of jagged circle. So let's start putting that together in this tutorial. And what we want to get to start with is that circular kind of explosion pattern of the particles. So if we look at particle.cpp now, we've got it that we're initializing the x and y coordinates of each particle to a random value when the particles created. Let's get rid of that and instead put the particles using the constructor initialization list here. Let's put them right in the center of the screen which in our, in our particle coordinate system is at 0, 0, x equals 0, y equals 0. And if we run this now, they start from the center of the screen but you'll notice there's a re rectangular pattern to the explosion. That's because we're choosing the um, x and y values here randomly, um, but um, using a rectangular coordinate system like that and, and choosing the x and y speeds of the particles separately is what leads to this rectangular pattern. What we really want to do is we want to choose two things for each particle. Firstly, a completely random direction from 0 to 360 degrees. And secondly, a speed uh, so that we, we're not introducing any kind of rectangular elements in there. And if you've done any mathematics, um, you'll recognize this is basically changing from Cartesian coordinates, which we're using at the moment, to polar coordinates. Um, but if you haven't done any mathematics, don't worry about that because um, the formulas that I'm going to show you, you don't really have to understand them unless you're going to do a lot of detailed graphics work. You can just um, use them. So instead of having an x speed and y speed for our particle, I'm going to go to particle.h here, get rid of those, and instead of those I'm going to have a double m underscore speed, which will just be how fast the particle is moving in whatever direction it's moving in, and a double m underscore direction, which will be the angle from 0 to 360 degrees that the particle moves in. And then in particle.cpp, let's get rid of the update method because that's now not in use anymore. And let's get rid of this stuff that initializes the x speed and y speed because we're not using that anymore. Let's start by picking a random direction for the particle. So uh, again, we'll use our old friends rand and randmax here. We divide, rand returns a random number from naught up to whatever randmax is, which is a big number. So if we do this, we'll get a number from naught to 1.0, except that we have to make sure that either randmax or rand is converted to a double first, or else we'll get integer division, which would just give us naught, discarding the floating point bit. And in fact, in um, mathematics in general and in programming as well, angles are not measured using degrees but using radians or some people say radians. And uh, the radian measures a full rotation, not in 360 degrees but in 2 times pi radians. Um, so uh, like pi is 3.141592. Uh, roughly. Uh, so um, 2 times pi is going to be something like, I suppose, 6.3, roughly. So we, we measure the full circle of rotation from as, as being not from 0 to 360, but from 0 to 6.3, roughly. And that has various mathematical advantages. So we want to pick an angle here from 0 to um, 2 times pi, uh, which is about 6.3, I think radians and we can use a constant, a pi constant from math.h. Uh, so let's let's use that. Let's say um, here 2 times and the constant's called m underscore pi and it's about 3.141592 times rand here. You might need to uh, 
You might need to include using namespace standard um, here, but I, it seems like I, I don't need it, um, so, um, so I won't put it in. Seems seems to be fine that we don't need to use the standard namespace to get this m underscore pi, at least on this system anyway. Let's put this in brackets to make sure that we have a double here. We're dividing, a, the numerator is definitely a double um, before we divide by the integer denominator because we have to have either the top bit numerator or the bottom bit of the fraction denominator as a double in order to make C++ do floating point division. This is choosing our angle and uh, then we're going to choose the speed. So m underscore speed and again rand divided by rand underscore max will give us a random number from 0 to 1 point 0 and uh, we can multiply that by some constant let's let's try some number so i'm just going to experiment with some some number here um, and again it's floating point number of course it's very important i tried different values i just experiment with different values and find find uh, found some that, that work for uh, what I'm, I'm going to do here. So you, you can experiment too and, and see what results you get. So we've got the direction and speed and in update now I can calculate how much to move the x and y coordinates by. Let's have a double m underscore, uh, that's not m underscore sorry, let's call it have a double x speed equals and the formula here, which you'll recognize if you've done any mathematics, but if you haven't, don't worry, is if you've got a direction and a speed like this and you want to calculate a x speed and a y speed, the x speed is the speed times the cosine of the direction. And we're using cos and sine from math.h. And the y speed here is going to be m underscore speed times the sine of the m underscore direction. These are just functions that basically give us the right values projecting onto the x and y coordinates. So now we can add those on to m underscore x plus equals x speed and m underscore y plus equals y speed. Let's run this and see how it looks. So this is very, very slow. Let's quit it and let's um, make this constant smaller for the speed, so a bigger speed. Now it's quite fast actually. I want to slow it down a bit. We'll try that and we'll also maybe have more particles. Let's go to screen.h, no sorry, swarm.h and let's try 5,000 particles which this computer at least can cope with. And if yours can't, you might want to stick with a lower number of particles, but um, this, this looks good on this computer, at least. Go back to particle.cpp and let's run this. Now we've got an explosion, um, but uh, it's, it's, it's beginning to look like an explosion, but you'll notice it's oval and not cir circular. So uh, let's at least fix that in this tutorial. Now that the speed, by the way, will, at the moment it's going to depend on the speed of your system. It's going to, the speed that these particles move at is just going to depend on how quickly this loop can iterate in main.cpp. And that's not desirable either. We'd like, like it to run at the same kind of speed on any system. So we need to fix that as well. But the last thing I'm going to fix in this tutorial is just to stop it looking oval. Um, the reason it looks oval is because of um, we're, we're taking the particle space and mapping it to screen space here in main.cpp but the screen is wider than it is high and uh, because we're um, trying to fit that minus one to plus one on x and y kind of box neatly into the screen and because the screen is wider than it is high we end up with a with an oval. We've mapped the particle space in such a way that it gives us this oval. The key to not having an oval there is to make sure that whatever the um, coordinate of the particle is, uh, we always multiply it by the same value, both for x and y. So um, the the range of the particle, which is two, that's from minus one to plus one, is a range of two. We then multiply it by um, half of the screen width, for example, 
to, to get um, a range of the screen width. But that gives us a different range for the width and height because we're using the height to multiply the range of particle range of 2 from minus 1 to plus 1 um, to, to map that to the height. So let's, let's change these so that um, instead of using screen height here, we're using screen width, screen width. Now this is a step in the right direction. So this means that the x and y um, range of the particle is going to be uh, the same, but the explosion now starts from, it's not the centre of the screen anymore, but you can see that it's circular because the range of it is the same in both the x and y directions. To fix that, we're going to have to rethink the height calculation a bit. What we'll do is first we'll take the, um, let's get rid of some of this, first we'll take the y coordinate and multiply it by, um, by this, the screen width divided by 2, because that will extend the range of the particle, it will change it from 2, minus 1 to plus 1, that's a range of 2, to um, the screen width, which is, which is fine. Particles are going to go off the edge of the screen, um, off the top and the bottom, but it doesn't matter because, you know, because the width is, is bigger than the height. But if they go off the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter because we've made sure on a set pixel that we're, we, are, we aren't going to plot any particles that are off the edge of the screen. So we can safely do this. We don't have to worry about exactly where they are. Now, um, we need to, um, if, once we've got the range right here, uh, this, at the moment, if the particle is at position zero, that will mean that it will be at zero on the screen, which will be right at the top of the screen because I, uh, sorry, Y starts numbering downwards. So the, the, the zero of Y is at the top of the screen. If we run this now, we get this, it's right at the top here. What we want to do is add to that half of the height. So if we add to this screen, colon, colon, screen, uh, screen height, let's use the autocomplete there, divide by two. Now if we run this, we get, get it in the right position because if you think about it, when the particle's at zero, zero times screen width over two is still zero. Add half of the screen height and that puts the zero right halfway down the screen, which is what we want. So um, I think I'm going to leave it there for this tutorial. This is a little bit inefficient because we're, we're, we're doing this division by two every time we go around this loop. And if you want, you, can, um, you could define a constant above the loop equal to the screen width over two and use that here to avoid having this calculation, the division by two, to avoid doing it every time you go around a loop, which might be a good idea. The uh, compiler might optimize that um, anyway, but um, best not to rely on it. But I'm just going to leave it as it is for the moment. So we'll continue to work on this explosion in the next tutorial. We've got a few things to fix here uh, because it's still not what we want it to be. It also looks very rubbish uh, because, well, we're changing the colors of all the particles at the same time. And we haven't, more importantly as well, we haven't got a blur on the screen. We're just seeing individual pixels and it looks a lot cooler if you blur the screen. So we've still got to tackle that. But I'll leave it there for this time. And until next time, happy coding.